I'm gonna go ahead and take our next question. And that question is, how do you decide how much someone's injury claim should be worth versus what the insurance company says it's worth? Great question. And I think this kind of segues well from the last question. Why hire an attorney? Should I just listen to an insurance company? So uh, an in, in insurance company, they have a database. They're going to plug in your injury and your venue and your age and how much time you've missed off of work. And they're going to come up with their formula and they're going to stick a value on that case. An experienced personal injury attorney like Rocky and myself, we're going to get vocational experts. We're going to get economists. We're going to talk to the right doctors to see if you have a permanent impairment or restrictions. Those are the types of things where we can increase add value to the case to make sure you are compensated for exactly what you owe. An insurance company, on the other hand, they're going to do everything they can to build their case against you. And one of those big ways to do that is they look at property damage. Was there a lot of property damage? And I think Rocky had a, a great case on this exact issue here recently. Yeah, but Mike, this just came up. I uh, had a case in southwest Mississippi uh, last week where there wasn't a lot of property damage, but it was a big truck that came across and, and hit my client. I think we may have the picture to, to show the, the audience. And, and so, you know, the way I address this and I start talking about it in, in Boyd Dyer when you're picking the jury is, does anybody think that just because there's not a lot of visible property damage and there's some, I mean, you can see part of the uh, fender is bent back and the, the hood was pushed up. So there's definitely an impact. But I ask people, could is, is the mere fact that there may not be a lot of visible property damage mean that somebody can't be seriously injured? And sometimes people answer that question. Sometimes people say, no, you know, I can still listen to the rest of the evidence. Here's what the evidence was in, in my case, that it was really more about what the person's body does than about what the outside of the car looks like. And the insurance companies 110% know that. And, and in my case last week, uh, my client actually, although they didn't go to the uh, by ambulance to the ER initially, within a few days, their neck starts to hurt. They have headaches. And then within a week, their arm goes numb. And then they know something's really wrong. They go to the doctor. Next thing, they get an MRI that shows they have a herniated disc. Then they have to have neck surgery. And now they have a permanent scar. They're going to have permanent pain for the rest of their life. And the jury ended up giving us around $700,000 on that case, even though at first blush, there may not be, you know, a lot of evidence of visible property damage. It doesn't mean that you're not hurt. Mike, have you seen that? Absolutely. I'm, I've seen it specifically in a parking lot case. So cars aren't, aren't traveling at a high speed. They back out, they hit the vehicle. Well, what it does to your body is not always accurately shown based on the property damage. So again, it's something that, that an insurance company may try to use against you. They may try to build that case against you, but do you have a case? Absolutely. But you need a lawyer that's experienced handling it, just like Rocky did in that low impact or, or not low impact, a case where you didn't have significant property damage. So it's a, it's a great point. And yes, we see it and we see it all the time. 